<laughs> All right. Um, obviously, you know, everybody's here for mostly everybody's here for a particular reason. Um, before we get to the um, public comment, I'm going to turn the floor over to Lori Collins, our borough manager, uh, to give you basically a uh, state of the borough address, uh, where we're at, um, what we've been doing, a um, uh, bunch of thank yous. Basically, hopefully there's a lot of questions you guys have, and hopefully we can answer if you're looking for information and get you some information right now. So, you worry? Thank you. I want to welcome everybody. I know it's under unpleasant circumstances. Um, I want to assure you that we're doing all that we can um, that's available us, for us to do right now for you. As far as, I'm just going to give an update. I, we did walk the area and we handed out flyers on June 25th, trying to get information out to you about what was happening at that time. Um, the information that I'm giving to you now is what has happened since that time. So it's just more or less giving an update. I know a lot of people don't have access to the internet. Um, your electri electricity may not be working, that type of thing. We've been trying to post on Facebook um, when things are out there, when events are out there, when um, there's help, the times for centers that are offering assistance and those types of things to try to keep you uh, aware and informed. Um, so, and we will keep doing that. When we have further information that you actually have to fill out and do any types of applications, that will all be sent to you individually. So, I have a listing of everybody that was affected, um, and when any information comes to us, then it will be in the mail directly to you. So don't think that um, you're going to be passed over. We will make sure that we get everything out to you. And if there comes a time that we're, we need to uh, do some applications and those types of things, we will have a community meeting where we will be there and we will assist you in filling out the applications. So we're not that far yet. Um, but when we get there, we'll be there to assist you. I, I'm just going to read this because there's a lot here. It's been over two weeks since the brutal storm of June 20th, 2018 affected our community, bringing with it destruction that has not been experienced in the past seven years. I would like to provide an update on what the borough knows at this point in time, but we'd first like to thank all who were and are involved in our cleanup efforts and road to recovery. I understand this road will be challenging, but we will be here to assist with information and guidance along the way. The list of volunteers and businesses that provided countless hours, whether it be in the cleanup process, providing the equipment to get the job done, or assisting in providing crucial basic needs is astounding. For their part in our recovery from this disaster, I truly wish to list and thank them for all of what they've done selflessly contributing to our community. First, the emergency responders and the fire departments. Um, the Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department, Fire Chief, and, and uh, fellow emergency management coordinator, Bill Chilio. Fairview Fire Department, South Fayette, Oak Ridge, Sturgeon, Lawrence, Mount Pleasant, Bower Hill, Presto, Rennerdale, Kerwin Heights, Carnegie, Crafton, Muse, and McDonald, all assisted. Water rescue teams, North Stravoli, <coughs> Denbo Vista, Stowe Township, Aetna, Elizabeth Borough, New Brighton, East Bethlehem Township, <coughs> Neville Township, Lonox, and Beaver Falls. Police departments, Bridgeville Borough, Collier Township, and South Vietnam Township. Our churches and members of the churches. Bethany Presbyterian, First United, United Methodist Church, Holy Child Church, and the Vineyard Church, and all the volunteers spending countless hours manning these facilities. The Municipal Public Works Department that we're here assisting, Bridgeville Borough, Collier Township, Robinson Township, South Bay Township, and Shaler Township. We can't thank them enough. Contractors, <coughs> Far West Cog, Dolphino Construction, Rick DeFavory, Heather, Heather Contracting, Lane Construction, Michael Brothers, Paul Orient Construction, Jet Jack, Weaver Town, and Waste Management, 
the agencies, Red Cross, South Hills Interface, Interfaith Ministries, LDS Charities, <coughs> Salvation Army, Allegheny County Department of Human Services, United Methodist Communities on Relief, and Southern Baptists. Donors and volunteers, Mayor Copeland, Deb Blasmo, Cheryl Valentino, Tom McDermott, Pam Weed of PJ's Deli, Sarasin's Hardware, Pittsburgh Eye Care Associates with Dr. Strain, and there are so many um, that I can't even mention all those who were kind enough to donate food, clothing, furniture, etc., etc., or work to dispense the items, and we thank you. There were many unknown volunteers assisting property owners with initial cleanup that we never found out who they were. They just came in and they assisted and they left and we thank them. With that being said, now to the update. Approximately 126 homes and 48 businesses were affected by this flood event. Three homes have been condemned at this time. As I have reported in my first correspondence dated June 25, 2018, Pima and Allegheny County Emergency Services did spend two days within the borough assessing estimated damages. Please note, damages are not included should the property have flood insurance. The information was compiled and has been submitted to FEMA for review. Along with Bridgeville Borough, the county did declare a state of emergency. It is unknown as of today if the recent storms that occurred in Millville, Aspinwall, and Fox Chapel, to name a few, will be included in the loss calculation. The loss calculation must meet $18.1 million for FEMA to declare an emergency and the applications for assistance to begin. You may have seen a representative from FEMA in your neighborhood. They are not there to take applications for assistance, but are servicing the homes that obtain flood insurance from FEMA. I had a lot of people tell me, well, FEMA was here. FEMA uh, institutes and, and runs a flood insurance <coughs> policies. So they were out, but they were assessing damaged homes that had the policies. <coughs> Allegheny County Emergency <coughs> Services is meeting with FEMA and Pima this week to try to establish the availability for businesses to apply for low-interest SBA loans. As soon as the information is shared regarding the outcome of, of this meeting, we will inform our business owners. Please understand, applying for and obtaining FEMA funding is a long process. It is not something that can be counted on in the present, but it's more of a reimbursement program at times taking months after the declaration for applicants to receive assistance. I've been informed today that Brentwood Bank will be offering microloans to residents in immediate need. Requirement is just a good credit history. Once we obtain more information regarding this program, we will pass it on to the residents. All debris has been removed from the stream with all streets open and functioning in a normal manner. The dumpsters will slowly be removed as the need lessens. The companies have requested we return some of our stock due to the need in Millville. Should you have a breed, place it at your curb. The Public Works Department will pick it up and take it to the nearest dumpster. Should you not have taken advantage of the tetanus shots offered by St. Clair Hospital, please let my office know. Should there be enough participation, I will try to set up an additional time for immunizations. The Flood Relief Center's updated schedule for this week has been posted on the Bridgeville Borough Facebook page should you still be in need of supplies. They are overwhelmed with clothing, so please, if you are in need of clothing, visit the Vineyard Church. That's where all the clothing, clothing has been housed. I will continue to ensure that everyone is provided with accurate, updated information. Should you, you have a special need or concern, <coughs> large or small, please do not hesitate to contact me, Bill Chileo, or a council member. We will try to provide you with the answers needed to enable you to make the best choice for you, your family, or your business with the information available. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, before, and one more person, uh, Jason Ortiz, our state representative, he's also here. Uh, with some words he'd like to say as well. Sure, and I, I promise I will be brief. Uh, the only update, Lori touched upon it, I received a couple hours before the meeting, that FEMA will be down here with the SBA and the county officials tomorrow. So if you see them walking around, they're assessing the damage. Uh, they're ultimately the ones tracking uh, all the collected and total cumulative damage to get to that $18.1 million. Um, what happens at the PEMA level is, is they'll open up low interest, short-term loans. There's no money available at the state level. 
So what they try to do is open it and get it to FEMA because that's where the, that's where the grant money is at. So that's why it's important that we get the 18.1 million. So if you see people who don't have flood insurance, make sure they get down here and file their claim. That's really important. And that's what I've been trying to tell everyone for the last couple of weeks. There are still people, as Lori touched upon, that don't have internet access, uh, who may not have seen the posts or the flyers out there. Uh, if you can, if they're your neighbors, they're in the community, let them know so they can get down here and file the proper paperwork. Uh, every little bit helps. It really does. And you know, when you're talking about the area that it hit, it really doesn't take that much to get there these days. But uh, just to give you some perspective, there were the storms, I think, or the landslides, I think, in February. They just declared a federal disaster, um, I think, late last month. So it was several months after the fact. I know nobody wants to hear that, but that's the speed that the federal government seems to work at when they're collecting these things. But I just want to give everyone the, the proper level and expectation of time moving forward. Um, I, of course, am happy to work with anyone here along with council to help coordinate with the state and the feds in any way that I can. Um, offer any assistance. I know I've had a few people call my office and visit my office. Certainly, I threatened down here to Lori. Um, but when it, when it flooded, I was in Harrisburg. My first call was to Lori and then to Mike. Uh, they were both gracious enough to give me a few minutes to explain to me what was going on, um, and I really appreciate that. Lori's been doing a really great job. She's been coordinating with me for the last couple of weeks, keeping me up to date um, until I got back into the district. And again, I'm really thrilled with the huge list of fire departments and the communities around us that have come here to offer assistance. I think that's a testament to the relationships that the fire chief has built, to the council, and ultimately to everyone here, because that just doesn't happen by coincidence. So I want to give a special thanks to the fire chief and his crew. I know they were working and grinding out. When I saw you, Bill, I thought you were going to pass out from exhaustion. So <laughs> it's good to see you here. Uh, but again, I, I want a special thanks to, to Bill and to Lori. Lori's been working her butt off for you guys. I hope you guys see that and appreciate that. I know that I have. She's been keeping me up to date. So again, if there's anything that I can do in my office, I mean, we're literally right down the street. I'm happy to help send the same to council here. If I can be of any assistance to you guys during this process, please do not hesitate to ask. And I will certainly maintain contact as I uh, keep in touch with Pima and the county officials as well. But thank you guys for allowing me an opportunity to speak tonight and hopefully uh, get some things moving soon. Thank you, Jason. Thank you guys. All right, uh, one more thing before we get to our first uh, visitor. Um, I want to thank Lori's husband, Terry. Uh, I know you left him off the list, but he built a lot for us in this community and also keeping Lori sane. <laughs> so, well, thank you very much. Um, Council, uh, we'd like to recognize our first visitor. Uh, Thanks, Lori, please. Uh, there you are. Like, and one thing, we have a lot of, a lot of visitors tonight. Um, I'm going to try to keep everybody to three minutes so we're not in an interest of time. So try to be, try to be uh, concise, and also try not to be redundant. So if somebody brings something up, you don't need to hear it a second time. We all, we all know where the hot spots are, and you know, we all have an idea what the solutions are, we know where the hot spots are, and we are working on those. So that's it. That is it. Thank you. Um, well, Lori pretty much said everything I was gonna say, but I got some real pictures here. Uh, I don't know how many of how devastating that water was. I mean, I mean, it was a spring shower compared to that, right? okay? And come come down the next day and see all the people working and helping, giving things. I mean, it's just a tribute to everybody here, you know? And, and it's just amazing when people come together uh, and what can get done. But I wanted to thank you know, Lord, you, you know, I mean, the dumps were, were coming in. Uh, public Works was nuts. You know, they worked around the clock. You know, I come in, I, I get down at 6 o'clock in the morning, and they're down there still working. You know, so you guys did an amazing amount of work. To, if you saw these pictures and what it looks like three or four days later, it was just outstanding. Okay, you guys really did work. And you know, all, all the people who were here, I mean, uh, the different communities, uh, it's, it's, it's overwhelming. It's so overwhelming, <laughs> except for maybe St. Clair, they were dusting off their golf course. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. Thank you. Um, 
That's Paul de Blasio. Thank you. Mayor Copeland, I'm sure you will speak to the town. I have a couple of thank yous. Ed's on back. That cold water was really appreciated. It was right at the right time and right at the right spot, and he was just one of the hundreds of people in our community who came out. Yeah, just very much appreciated. You know you've got a problem when you've got boats from Neville. They're coming to pick up people. Lori? I don't know what else to say other than you're amazing. I heard the story about the shoes. You're also crazy, but I'm glad you are crazy. <laughs> I've been where you are. Somehow I escaped without one of these flights. But I've been there. I know that this isn't easy, Mr. President. I know it isn't easy for any of you. Our public works did their job. I'm hoping that maybe over the next couple of months, some planning can occur. If God brings rain, man brings planning. Clearly, this is not news. This is obviously maybe the second or third <coughs> raining of a grain event that has hit Baldwin Street in 2018. This is a continuing problem. It happened in 2013. You know, Denny's picture of the side of his, his garage where he marks them off. We've got to reach up. They have this, this, this event on June 20th, but it's not new. There are a couple of things I'd like you to consider as council. First, a request for proposals from a hydraulics engineer. We have pleaded with the Army Corps of Engineers for too long. Bridgeville has to take care of Bridgeville. I'm asking our council to consider requesting proposals from hydraulics engineers to look at McLaughlin Run and see if we can't find a solution. I know everyone, I have my own ideas. I'm an accountant, not a hydraulics engineer. So we should get some good information. Let's get some requests for proposal. It doesn't cost anything to ask. We'll find out how much it is. Second, people are trapped. Not trapped by water at the moment. They're trapped in properties that they cannot get out of. If they sell them to someone else, that just means someone else is trapped in a property in a flood zone. I would ask council to consider a resolution asking the manager and the attorney to explore acquiring flooded property. Yes, FEMA has some programs for this. But before people completely put tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars into properties, perhaps council could look at it. The third is really tough for me. There is a project that is near and dear to my heart. The south end of Washington Avenue, where we sit in traffic every day to get on Interstate 79. That project, last meeting, council authorized $488,000. Let's call it a half a million. I think council should rescind that authorization and hold Bridgeville's money for Bridgeville. It might come in, it, you might end up being able to use it in the future for that project. I think that that project is something that's very important to me. I've fought for it. I want it. It's important to our town so that our residents can get home at night, can get to work in the morning. We, we all agree it, it passed seven to nothing, right? Yep. I'm asking that you consider rescinding that. Between now and 2020, maybe the state or for that matter, the federal government will come up with the money to do what is a regional project. It is an entrance to a federal highway. So if they come up with the money to do the highway project, that leaves $488,000, half a million, for you and this council to use for Bridgeville. Thank you very much. I'd like to call by Janet Ray. Um, I'm here to represent my 91 year old mother who lives at 1011 McLaughlin Run Road. She has lived there for 67 years. 
She has had several basement floodings. Sure, we've lost furnaces and hot water heaters over the years. Never have we had a flood like this. It came on the first floor, and it came in from McLaughlin Road. And uh, that was because up by Coolidge Street, where it meets McLaughlin, I thought it was a water main break, but Laurie, Laurie told me it wasn't. But it was clogged sores with blew a manhole and flooded the road. The water then came into her house, and thank God my brother was staying with her that night to get her out. Um, we were waiting for rescue to be, uh, people. They came, they saw that they were okay because they were sitting on steps watching the water came in. But the steps they were sitting on, my brother could hear the blocks being pushed down from the foundation. So the whole foundation is ruined. Uh, I just talked to the engineer and I'm gonna, he's going to come tomorrow morning to look at it. There is police tape around the house. My mother has lost everything. Was it source clogged? What, what hasn't been done on the block? And why did this flow? The creek was half full. The creek was not overflowing when the road flooded into the house. Coincidentally, the day that the flood occurred, Coolidge Street was milled right, to be prepared to be paved, mm -hmm. which means that when all of that water came down that roadway, it went straight into our catch basins. If that street had not been milled, it's the same hill whether it's milled or milled. No, we have we have records because we are we are required under our MS4 permit that we have factors in here. They miss McLaughlin in every in every area throughout the town. We clean catch basins. Every time it has flooded since 2004, right after the water and the, the two to three times that it has flooded this year, we have cleaned all of the catch base. Can you tell me the last time it was cleaned on the clock uh, road? Yeah, I, I, I keep a folder yeah, right. with, with everything. Your folder's you did fall, you didn't do the block. Yeah. Last, also, McLaughlin, they said the, the creek has been cleaned. McLaughlin's creek has not been cleaned out of any debris. No, it has. No, not at all. We're not permitted to dredge. I'm not oh. saying dredge. Get out oh. the garbage to flow down there. From Upper St. Clair. There's, there's, From Upper um, St. Clair. There's a telephone pole across the creek now that's still not been removed. Next storm, it comes up high again. It's all part of the flood. You need to send someone all the way up the creek. It's not just Baldwin Street, Street, it's McLaughlin Run. Yeah. It has to go from Baldwin up McLaughlin. And it starts at Upper St. Clair. And then, and then, something has to be done about Upper St. Clair. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. Um, question, if my mother's house is condemned because there's police tape around it. Also, McMurray Fire Department was not recognized on your list. They were the people that came and knocked on our door and said, does your basement need to be pumped up? We said, we don't know, we haven't gone down yet. They went down and said, oh, you've got to get out of this house now. And he said, give us an hour so we could try to rescue more things. There's police tape around, and hopefully um, things might be resolved tomorrow. But who condemns the house, or who tells me what happens? The building inspector. And who is the building inspector? The, the building inspector is Dan Felton. Um, Dan did not condemn that house. Why? Because I mean, I, nobody's told me anything. We did not condemn that house. Him and I walked down there. We walked all the houses that yeah. had the severe damage. That house is still considered to be habitable. It just needs repair. There is no structural damage. The whole foundation, if you, if somebody would came down into the basement, they would see locks are blown out. We the were down in there. You were we, inside. It was locked. How could you be in there? We caught in, ma'am. Me and him walked down. We caught in. The blocks are gone. There is no sagging on the house, no nothing. He said all it does is need the block put back up. We've had this before, previous floods in the town. The house is repairable. That's why it was not condemned. Our insurance man was there yesterday and said, it's going to cost you more to repair this than what it's worth. It's worth $56,200. That's a lot. Now it's not worth anything. I'm between a rock and a hard place. I'm looking for help. We understand that. 
Some people don't want their house to condemn because it puts them in a different category. My mother doesn't have the money to pay for it. I understand it. that, ma'am. I'm just explaining what went on that day. And he did not condemn it because it is repairable. Can somebody else give a second opinion on this? Mm -hmm. Not that I... I you have the right to bring somebody sure. else in if you want, yes. We have some other houses that their foundations have caved in, and they're actually, um, one of them has already started the repair. Um, so they, the foundations, when they cave in, are repairable, and, and that's why they don't <coughs> condemn them. Condemning them is stating that you can't repair it. It has to come down. Unfit for human habitation means that it needs to be cleaned out. Um, there are maybe some electrical issues, that type of thing. You can't live in it, but it's not condemned. So if it's fixable, just like there, it actually the two houses that lost their foundations are both down at the corner of this street. One lost both sides, both sides caved in, and the other one, one side caved in. And uh, in 2004, that house, the other side caved in. And uh, they're in the process of fixing it right now. So because it's fixable, that's why we don't condemn it. Condemning is when it's falling in and nothing can be done. But there's police tape around that's saying that we cannot go in because that's it's dangerous. No, because, because it's not, it's not habitable right now. There's two different levels of condemnation. There's where, as Laura's explaining, if it's declared to be something that you can't live in right now, which it is, and it's uninhabitable, and it's that's why it's that way. If there's eventually an assessment that it not only is not uninhabitable, but it can't be fixed and it's an unstructured and unsound and needs to come down, then that's a different level of <coughs> demolition level condensation. And, and their assessment is that Chief Chilio was trying to say is that that's not a monetary assessment, that's a structural assessment from the public standpoint. You're sure, yes, they may have the, 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 the police tape and fire tape around some of these buildings is around it for a safety. Not to keep you out, it's to keep everybody else away and safe. Well, why didn't you tell her that then two weeks She hasn't ago. been around. I we put it on there every day. How about better communication then? There, there's been no communications. Well, the letter went around too with my number on it. You could have called my number. I had a lot of people call I'm that. Sorry, it's my fault. Well, I'm not saying it's your fault. But you know, I, I could be in so many places at so much time. It's very stressful all the way around everything you know i am trying and she is the borough is trying to help everybody but you can only get pulled so many directions when you have as much devastation as we had in this community okay. and that's what people got to understand i tried to be patient until so, i came i finally yeah. called lori on friday would you be popular with me with lori Yes, I, I need now. help. I just, yeah. you know, let's, give me a second that. opinion I mean, or something. I need help. Just, um, just coming to the bar. Oh, yeah, so there's 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 the bar how to listen to the bar has a story like this. We'd be more happy to sit down in the Why can't they basis. contact so, them directly? Mm -hmm. You know, they're collecting I mean, taxes. I appreciate that. Then you have her information. Please, if we might want to time, please, so. Contact the people and who own the property. There's a rumor going on about floodgates were going to be put up by McLaughlin Run or by the park, and then that was kiboshed or whatever. What's going on with that? There's no floodgates. Not floodgates. To stop debris from Upper St. Clair coming in. Trash racks. Trash racks. Trash racks. We were going to move forward with that, and we spoke to the conservation district. And we have to submit additional plans before we can install. So it's still a possibility? So it, it would still be a possibility, yes. Um, we had a permit uh, for, slope stabilization. for slope stabilization and a small crash rack area that when we looked at the design, felt that it wouldn't be suitable for what we needed. And when we called the conservation district, they said, the design wasn't the same to pool the posts. So we have a call into the conservation district to ask them what they will give us a permit for to put up there because we understand the debris that's on street. And we're trying to do something to protect the residents of the Thank you. Why well, aren't they consulted ahead of schedule? Mm -hmm. okay. um, Council like to recognize uh, Laura Gibbons. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, that um, I may, may be able to uh, give you some assistance also. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your time. Thank you. And once again, everybody was so great during this situation. We had so many uh, people from the fire department, the staff hospital kids, came in and was like, it's not a question. They just started taking things out and they worked so hard. And I asked them for their number. So I get them um, to do something for them. And they won't give it to me. They said that they didn't go for that. Mm -hmm. Did your so work on the sign in sheet so that I have it in the support for your I'm taking an entirely different things from the last meetings to say to everyone in this room, I'm the oldest one in this room, I have never seen devastation like this, never. We used to play on Chartier's Creek, we used to swim, we used to skate. I never did get down to a block and run. But we never, in my lifetime, had this kind of a disaster, which is exactly what it is. And I could cry with you. I wouldn't be able to help, but I could cry with you. Uh, I want to say to everybody who, re everybody who responded, Bill Chilio, the fire department, all of you people who work, our mayor work, the people in my church work, that was probably the best thing I saw come out of this whole disaster. The churches and the community were starting to work together. And with that, thank you very much for all you do. And everybody here, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to recognize uh, John Rattini. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry, what's your last name? Rattini. Rattini. I've uh, been in Bridgeville for 30 years in the insurance business, so you know, every time this happens, oh, 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 I have to deal with it. I just want to suffer with, with my clients and my clients and my neighbors. And we just keep going around and around. And I hear people today talking about these isolate, these their, their lives and how they're impacted. But I don't see any real movement. We got flooded out three weeks ago. I flooded out six weeks ago. It just keeps coming over and over again. I propose that the borough initiate or develop a committee to look at creating three pillars of action. One is to put together group of volunteers who understand how to work through bureaucracy and provide support for people in Florida to know who to call, what forms can be filled out, what agencies can be applied to, so that these people who are coming here without a clue where to go have an access point where they know and can get this information. The second pillar would be we need to come up with a real and needed action plan. If it rains tomorrow, we're back here dealing with this again. There's been no real solutions in the short term. I know we're talking about what we try to do with the with the barrier up, upstream. Obviously, that didn't get done. Um, there's some other people going to talk about the immediate problems we have, but we need a committee to, to drive that. And then the third thing is we need to come up with a long term plan. So we should form three different sub committees or task force each with community members who are, maybe they're engineers who can work on a long-term strategy, contractors that work on an immediate action plan, and then of course people who have worked in public service or whatever they can help with the switch on community members getting through this practice. There are, we do have, we are working on a long-term plan. 
Well, I, I think what we what we need is a little bit of focus on all three colors of that solution. And so I would like to propose that we create a committee that puts together these subcommittees that can address these three. Because right now, like I said, it just seems like we're just we're, we're just here doing. It. So, thank you, thank you. So what happens now to the people that aren't financially able to pay their taxes now because all the money they had to put out for their houses is getting flooded. So, you know, that's, that's all the assessments. Well, well, as far as, uh, as the, the assessment of the property, we could contact the Office of Property <laughs> assessments and give them the addresses of the affected houses. Yeah, we've been flooded down three times this year. This year, and I think Baldwin Street is four times, I'm not sure. <coughs> and it, that, that's how the valuation is. Well, I'm really just bringing, I'm, I'm bringing that yeah. to the attention. And, and we, could, we could call in and see if they're willing to do that. And another thing with uh, the flood insurance, that's a big joke. The last time I got flooded, I got $1,600, and that didn't even pay for the furnace. And a lot of people in here that have flood insurance, you know, they don't cover their contents in the basements, and they give me 10 cents for a $100 item. It's a big joke. But if this happened in another country, our government would send billions over to them, just like you're doing in Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> we got to lay it back. Recognize uh, Mr. Matthews from Clyde. Yeah, I'm actually going to pass. Oh, uh, oh we vote Karen. Okay. Uh, Bob Fryer. Yeah, thanks for having me. The uh, people that are well known for getting the shirts off their backs for the neighbors to help. And with the fire department and the police and other people have done this remarkable. But rather than us complimenting and thank thanking each other, I think we should concentrate on what a couple of the people have brought up a solution to the problem that's permanent and to get the millions of dollars to do it. This is a, a regional problem. I want to mention this to you. I ran just two weeks ago, by accident, I ran across the 1980 state study flooding ritual. To make, it, to make the recommendations brief, brief uh, all of the old bridges in Bridgeville are too small, except for one built 10 years ago. These are just two, exam two examples. The Culvert Street Bridge, which is uh, 40 to 50% smaller than some of the other bridges. And as you all know, right 200 feet up from the culvert that's behind the little ice cream place is the uh, bridge, excuse me, the bridge over uh, Barga Road that has the center column, collects all the debris that floods uh, Baldwin Street more rapidly. I just like to go on here. 
the state study said all the bridges are too old, too small. The creek channels, it's also too narrow, too shallow, and not walled in. The tens of thousands of new homes and businesses that were built upstream and up to St. Clair and Bethel Park obviously also contribute greatly to what's been happening. And this study was done in 1980. That development of those two townships have continued for three more decades. Uh, the state study recommended widening the openings under all the bridges or replacing them, widening the width of the creek bed, encasing and or walling in the creek bed rather than the stream, and reforming the abrupt, there are uh, three abrupt 90 degree angles to block the creek that takes, which means the centrifugal force uh, throws it up over the, the banks. Uh, I don't you know what they are. And uh, again, the solution, uh, the, the uh, more gradual terms have to be made to prove that. There's Pat Blade that just said, uh, we need the Army Corps of Engineers, we need tri hydraulic engineers, and uh, 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 in the final analysis, the report says, Bridgeville doesn't have the money to do it, and we can't give it to you. So I think the time has come for the officials and the people in the community to convince the federal, state, county funding agencies that this is a regional problem. This is no, uh, no longer a problem just for people in Bridgeville. I'd like to suggest some to you guys move on. Oh, oh, one other thing. This area right here is uh, a <coughs> drive out to block one road. Is that power step? Power step. That's it. Actually, 50, 50. As a matter of fact, you and I and the guy from the DDP. I didn't go through. Sure. This, 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 this is five years ago. That was oh, I thought go. you were there. The guy from the DDP. Department of Environmental Protection came down and I gave him the measurements of all these bridges in Bridgeville. I don't think he believed me. And he and I waited in the creek to measure this one. And he said, these are, it's not just this bridge. This is how two or three of the bridges are terrible. At any rate, there's a 50,000 square feet of area up a walk and run on the right that could be used to build as some sort of reservoir or collecting area. Also, I think, Lori, you're also working on another similar idea of having a similar collection area over the uh, park. Is that the Bridgeville Park? I mm -hmm. Yeah, over the Bridgeville Park on the block and the road. Those things have to be aggressively pursued. And one, one, if you guys have moved away, I'd just like to suggest to show you one other thing. Well, I don't know. <laughs> the, 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 that's right. This is in regards to financing. Uh, I, anytime you ask PennDOT or the federal and state government for money, for millions, which we need to do this project, they want to know what the return is, all right? And what one of the ideas that I'm suggesting is, that's Baldwin Street. And since the study says that McLaughlin Run should be encased in a large concrete uh, conduit, let's say from the Baldwin Street Bridge down to the uh, culvert, one of the possible things that you could look into is making Baldwin Street, another central business district in Bridgeville, making Bowerger Road four lanes wide over top of the culvert that I just referred to. And this is just uh, this is just the drawing of that concept. I think by convincing the powers to be who want projects to show off, because it continues to patient. A lot of things of this nature should be able to do. Certainly, I would recommend comes to the next planning commission meeting. I'll, I'll, I'll be there. I mean, it doesn't look like that, but there is something that is similar to that. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad to I have one more, one more comment. Go ahead. Uh, uh, the people in Bridgeville, uh, I'm, probably, I'm probably one of the old people in Bridgeville. You and I. But that's like, <laughs> <laughs> pretty old. He is pretty old. He's old. At any rate, I've been here a long time. And I think the people in Bridgeville have suffered more than they should have. I remember as a kid, uh, the chemical factory in South Fayette, excuse me, I was just executing uh, toxic fumes that we all breathed for four decades at night and no one knew about it. And then the uh, cement company uh, here, a third of the people in town breathed cement dust. Uh, 
And the, I, I was with FEMA uh, in uh, New Orleans after the Katrina hurricane, and they spent a week training us about the dangers of sending people back into sewage saturated homes. The people in this community, excuse me, have had to do that several times. It's unfair. Thank you, Bob. Ah, uh, Denise Hutton. There she is. There she is. <laughs> They pretty much said what I wanted to say. One was about the Upper St. Clair and trying to get that taken care of so we don't get flooded down in here. The other one was um, with the business, the lady talked about her business. In our business, as you know, okay, we had no, no insurance, no flood insurance, no nothing. That's a nonprofit place. For me, okay? I had all my catering things were in there. All of our equipment was in there. We have not even a napkin or nothing left in our business. My truck, I was at work, just painted it off three months ago, and I lost my truck in the flood. I have no vehicle. I lost my computer. I lost all my stuff in my truck. I lost everything in water up to here. Climbed out of a window to save a guy in our bar. Just all kinds of stuff happened. I have to go get surgery on my throat because of the stench and the debris and everything that was in there. I had a kid with, he's on steroids, he's on major antibiotics. They want us to still continue to work down there. They want us to still continue to clean it up, which is all fine and good. But I don't see anybody coming to us or helping us either. And I'm very upset about it as far as money-wise, assistance, anything. I've been to the churches, they're wonderful. They gave us cleaning products, they gave us blankets, they gave us tables, they gave us all kinds of stuff. But I've been trying to get a hold of Pima. I walked up to the guy here, he didn't want nothing to do with me. As soon as I said to him I have no insurance, he went out, I can't talk to you, and walked away from me. Okay? I've been to probably four or five different people. I have not received phone calls from anybody. I don't know where to go to, um, I mean, I live in Hickory, okay? So I have to get a half hour ride into here and a half hour ride back out there. Okay, just to try to clean our business to get my employees to get some money in their pocket also. Okay, none of us can do anything. I need to know what I'm supposed to do. And is there any help for our equipment, my truck, my stuff that was down there? And for, I also have tenants in these buildings. I have a lady, she's handicapped. She has steps that go up. It was all the way to the top of her floor. The boat had to get her out also. She, now we might have to destroy that building. I have two tenants in there. They have nowhere to go. So, I mean, it can't be we're working on this or we're gonna wait for this or that. We need to move. We need to do something soon. And if you guys can guide me to somewhere to talk to people, I have no problems talking to anybody. <laughs> After Thursday, I probably won't, but give me the calls and I will do whatever it takes for it. You know what I mean? I don't live here, but all my stuff was down here. And my girls are down here and my tenants are down here. And it's a business that we have 369 members that were in our business. I had a gentleman that's a member, his whole complete trailer, camper thing, probably $16,000, gone, gone. Can't pull it out. And another thing, when I was getting into my truck, I went out, someone said, your truck's gonna go under. I go out, it's up to my door. So I go reverse it back, and I said, wait, I'll just drive through and go up to Kogos. They wouldn't even let me come out of the road. Okay? Now me, it's four wheel drive, I'm crazy, I'm gonna try it, and it'll be my fault if it didn't go through. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I should not have been told, don't go through. That's my truck, it's my, my deal. Okay? But instead, I listen to them, I back all the way up, and my truck's floating, water up to the ceiling, just paid it off three months ago, and now I don't have full coverage. Okay? So that's where I stand. Yeah, I have insurance, liability. But full coverage don't, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. That's my way to get back and forth to work. Okay? Now, not one of my people are going to help me at our club, so I'm asking for people here to give me some help. That's all. Okay. Do I do Sir, just a point about Puerto Rico. It is part of the United States. Thank you. All right.
um, so is Bridgeville. That's all. Yeah, I so is Bridgeville. They gave him $92 billion. I have to give him a lot of I told him what's going on. I'd like to recognize Randy Thompson. Saw him here. I you're staying in the office. We all, we all can point and say, yeah, that's fine. They said that's there's cost. a host of sewer in the uh, upper chain floor. I don't believe that either. Show me proof. Um, oh, Lord. I want to apologize. My sister gets a little nice. You know who my sister is. I know. She was young. She was like, who are you going to listen to? It's fine. But I agree. Dan, I'm nervous. I already talked to Chad. You know, people come down the wall with me, 80 miles an hour. There's kids playing. They skateboard down the street. They ride their bikes. Someone's going to get killed on that road. Okay. You're cheap, he's saying. I heard you spoke earlier. I heard you talk. Okay. All right, talk. There's four people that you said you could sit here, you could sit there. There's never enough one down on that street. And there's cars on up and down the street. You know, I walk. Thank God I don't have a license. Why do you have a license? We can go through Bridgeville, and I, I bet you there's everybody that lives in Bridgeville complaining about a speeder on their street. Yeah, and, but uh, it's, it's, it's bad. I'm not worried about it. Oh, that's the worst. Land or field like that. Sure. Where's that sewage go? On Baldwin Street. That's right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. We're going to roll now. We worked in that chemical plant, we're still living. plus was raised, so he's calling that roughly almost five. Uh, bar 31 is going to match that with another 5,000. And we're going to present it to the, uh, they're going to present it to the fire department on Thursday night. Shady Mods is also, they did a charity thing at Rumfish and they did it at the Tiki Marrow Beach. It's all supposed to come to you guys too. I talked to Bob from the Shady Mods, they're getting stuff together. So that all should be coming to you guys too. Well, I can tell you the event Saturday in Perry Harvest was a lot of fun. No. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> um, Chris Horn. I'll try to keep this short. Um, my name is Chris Horan. I'm on. I'm here on behalf of my family, uh, DNC Supply and the Bridgeville Rollerplex. So I'm pretty young, but this is the third time that I've been through this. Um, you know, I had a little bit planned out here, but um, my dad made a comment the other night when he got home and said, I don't think anything's going to come of this. It's just going to happen again. And this is after him working sun up to sundown all day, and he got up the next morning at 7 a.m. and was back at it rebuilding the business. 
DNC Supplies in its 50th year of business this year started by my grandpa and has been in Bridgeville all 50 years. Um, if that doesn't show resilience, I don't know what does, along with a lot of other people in here. Um, I think the, the residents of Baldwin Street, the businesses of Bridgeville, and really everybody else that is a member of this community deserves a lot better. So I really hope something can come of this and uh, really be something that comes up with a plan like John mentioned earlier, short term and long term, because it's something that needs to change if we want to make sure that this community stays a community, because I don't think many people want to take this much money. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Uh, Karen. I'm Karen Scott Martin, and my husband and I own Light Printing Company on Baldwin Street. This year, Light Printing Company celebrated 68 years in business. My husband and I have owned it since 2002. I listen to what I hear tonight and what I see we need. We need leaders, we need leadership. My question to everyone is, my question to everyone, all of you council members, how has the flooding in 2004, 2008, multiple flood flooding since then. I called Lori to complain we had sewer backup eight times since April, and she told me my employees could use the restroom down here because I have 13 employees, so when we have sewer backup, we can't use the restrooms. But I want to ask everybody on the council, how has the flooding impacted you? Yeah. Hey Bruce, tell her. Tell her, Bruce. This is what I want to know. Just How have I, in, in I, own, I, own. I have six pieces of property between my dad, my brother, and I on McLaughlin Run Road. All six were damaged, severely damaged. Okay, our shop, our garage got in our okay, shop. So you have a vested interest. Yes. You, you have yes. a vested interest. Is this, is this about vested interest? Is this about the community? Yeah. This is no, that's the question. Is this about vested interest? In or is this about the community? It's about the community. Let me tell you, I employ 13 people who are now worried. Are they from this that, community? Yes, that they so. have jobs. I pay taxes. How many businesses did you say <coughs> were impacted by the flood? 40. 40. They all employed people. <coughs> all those people. You know what the first thing I was worried about the morning <coughs> after the flood? My employees, they have homes, mortgages, car payments. They need to buy groceries. When 13 people are no longer able to be employed, what do you do? And I know I all 40 businesses have employees. I agree. Okay? But when does and it's when the you become our vested just, interest? When does this community become our vested interest? interest? Yeah. And that's what we need our borough council. And they we know. need good leadership in this they community. Are. Because, they no, they're not. They, they would have been at your door and they would not send both of your homes. That's they are here. Are here. You'll be here in the But in 2004, we had a bad economic impact. My husband and I carried a double mortgage on everything we owned since 2004. I came to council after council meeting, pleading with them to do something because we carried a double mortgage. It was everything we could do to stay in business and keep employed. And I know there are several other in this room the same way. And yes, it's a, we have a mixed use street. There's homes, there's businesses. Okay, it's impacted everyone that lives there, but you also have employees of the businesses that live there too. And we have poor leadership in this community. I'm sorry, but we do. Because we need an action plan. When something like this happens, I want to see you on the street. You, you, you. I want to see you on the street. We'd be there. I have to go. I don't know, I drove from home for nothing, I guess. I drove from home for nothing to drop you off. They did. Several of these members did. Tell me, why don't you all put, tell each one of your stories how you helped in the flood zone and tell me how it's going to economically impact 
your lives, okay? Right you offer us Mr. Verducci a loan. I'm still paying on another loan, okay? Uh, I, I, was I want to know how you pay for the community and help. The day after the flood, the early responders were there. They saved lives. Let me tell you my story, all right? I left my building at 10 to 9, completely unaware because I work late. A lot of nights, I work 60, 70 hours a week because I've been carrying a double mortgage on Baldwin Street since 2004. I left the building 10 to 9. My family didn't know where I was because at 9.15, my van in the parking lot was submerged and my press room was flooded. It's a matter, my life is a matter of 15 minutes. 15 minutes this time or I wouldn't be here. I would have been in the same position as that poor woman in Upper St. Clair. Mm -hmm. And I called Lori in April. I called Lori in May. I have letters. Mm -hmm. I've been played. I've been here when uh, Mr. de Blasio and, and Michael, you were there when we did this, this walk. When was that? 2016. Mm -hmm. Through town. We had Army Corps of Engineers come in. What can we do to save our borough? What can we do to take preventative measures? I came to a council meeting, and I remember Mr. Petroselli said, let's not spend the money on Baldwin Street. Let's right. save it for a rainy day. up-to-date information is that on the Facebook page or? yeah as as it comes into us I try to post it there um, hoping that you know it's the easiest place for to grab yeah. social media a website um, really we haven't had any substantial information to put out there except for the uh, you know the the centers that have been helping as far as 
clothing or that type of thing. When we have more information, um, forms to fill out, all of those things, they'll be individually mailed to everyone. Um, so, the, you know, you'll get what you have to get. Just the different changes in schedules and things. We put a bullet, like a bulletin board, like around town, like in the areas. Yeah, excuse me, some people aren't in their homes to get their mail. So how can they find out? Do we, on Facebook, do we go to Bridgeville Borough, Bridgeville Police? Who do we? Bridgeville, Bridgeville Facebook. Bridgeville Facebook. Bridgeville Facebook. Facebook. I'm on the Bridgeville Borough website. The link was broken today on the state of emergency pop-up. There was no information. The link was broken today on the website. It was like they could wonder why. For what, Bridgeville, Borough? Bridgeville, Borough. Yeah, so now we can oh, it just says state, state of emergency going. Did the state of emergency or link come up? Or it will just be nothing. It will say there was Okay. Never. I didn't know that. So. I think mean, everything's so bad that we still can't get it. Yeah. There's so much they could be doing. Yeah. So is it Bridgeville Borough? Yeah. Just search for Bridgeville Borough. Yeah. And it'll come up. It's been there. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, do you see the link? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to think about ways to mitigate the problem. The Army Corps of Engineers is where the money is. It's a million dollars. Why don't you add up how many millions, millions, people in this community have lost since 2008, the floods, and now? Millions. What's a million dollars? Do something collectively with private ownership, with property developers. Think on your feet to protect your community. That's what you don't do. You don't know what I do. I know, because I've been in business here long enough. I know I'm going to come to the complaints. I have a floor right now. I don't agree with Mr. Fryer all the time. Never. Actually, I never. <laughs> <laughs> but um, study from 1980. The study from 1980. I think that needs to be looked at with the bridges. The bridges. You know, they tax the crap out of us for gas. Well, that money is supposed to go towards bridges. Like I said, we need we need to hold their feet to the fire to get that money to make those bridges wider. Mike, we've also been in contact with the county as, as far as the bridge over Mallorca Road, the one that has the, uh, the center pier, and as far as meetings with the county have gone since 2004, they have informed us that it is not structurally deficient, and they will not assist us to get it or replacing it. So, if the borough of Bridgeville needs to replace it, the borough of Bridgeville will have to replace it. That's, that's not okay. Laura, that's Laura, excuse me. It's I, I'm, I'm not like, oh, sure. Good. Good. But, okay, so <laughs> we've been in conversation with Fritz Fitzgerald since the Saturday after. Right. Okay, I'm Jimmy Sullivan, your warehouse. Mm -hmm. We're at the epicenter. Oh, we were at the bottom of the lake. Mm -hmm. Lake Baldwin, West College. Right. Okay. Um, along with the club. We actually have a meeting with them this week. We have their attention, and I agree. Instead of firing bullets at each other, could someone please direct us when to fire and keep the, the fire lit under these people? Because Mr. Fitzgerald stood beside that creek right there, mm -hmm. and that's live, that's not a picture. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it is. We sleep at night with this beside us so I can watch the creek. Mm -hmm. There's cracked thunder. This is what I look at, yeah. okay? I don't want anyone to ever have to be on the other side of the phone that I was on on the other side of Library Road and I couldn't get here to help my wife and kid get vehicles and things out. And yes, Bill, things aren't as important as people. But at what point are people more important than critters in the bottom of the creek? Right. Yeah. Because the bottom of the creek can't be touched right. when it's a sunny day. That's right. Because my dog, whenever it was an emergency, Alino well, had an excavator in that creek that he couldn't fit anything beside it. Mm -hmm. So that's when we have to find out what are the rules of the game so we all know how to play it. And right. that's what I ask you people to point us in the right direction. John's point is, is accurate. Divide and conquer this thing. Mr. Fitzgerald asked me, who owns the bridge? I said, you do, sir. Mm -hmm. I said, and the borough owns the pavement on top of it, and I believe the state owns the rest of the road. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to get their act together and coordinate this. Because this was avoidable. Mm -hmm. And God bless the woman who passed. Yeah. But it's only by the grace of God that that's not what the focus is of this evening. And more people don't have someone in this room who perished. Yeah. It's going to happen. I have live video, mm -hmm. and I can replay for anybody who wants to see how it went down. Because our cameras work right up until the night, until the night it happened. Right up until the minute it was over. Well, I stayed there for two nights to protect our business in the parking lot. And also need to thank the chief and his folks too, because the police presence was abundant. And I know because I was there. So that's what's going to happen. We've only been here a short time. It's been four times that she's been flooded this year. And it's the same people who had all their brand new belongings going into the dumpster. So John's three-pronged approach is appropriate, and it's time that something happens before we're talking about a real tragedy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, there's a lot of but well. you can't go deeper. This was right. What you can dredge it, but you can't go deeper. You need a comprehensive plan to solve the problem. And you can you can get the numbers if you if you tie to an economic development cost. Land and DNC supplier. You could put up ten high-rise apartments there. 
the Baldwin Street area, those properties are worth nothing to the floodplain by redoing, by making that another business district for the people that want to stay there can stay there and move across the street. That's how you attract millions oh, of original. That's and then there's a regional project. Oh, that's what we're working on right that, now. That's part of our, we're working on that that's right part now. of our plan that's that we've been here. working on with the planning commission. That's good to do for the last mm -hmm. year and a half, two years. Yeah. Yes, well, okay. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Does anybody know what Act 5, uh, was it 542? Does anybody know what that is? House Bill 542? Have we heard of it? Yes, yeah, yeah. where's that? Fire, fire, fire fireworks law changed this year. Right. Uh, fireworks? Yeah, thanks. Yes. We have an ordinance for the time uh, when right. fireworks We did not change our ordinance. There is a PA law has changed, but we are not changing the subject. I'm sorry, we're not changing the ordinance. Mike, to give a quick rundown of Act 542, this year the fireworks law changed, actually changed in late 2017. A lot of fireworks it used to be. Changed. This is the first time it's changed since 1939. Correct. Correct. It actually, I think it went through in 2017, took effect in 2018. There's a lot of fireworks that are now legal that never used to be. Basically, mortars, bottle rockets, cherry bombs, you name it, it's now legal in the state of Pennsylvania. It used to be, you know, the way you determine, interpret the law, a lot of these side of the road firework stands could only sell sparklers, items that would throw flames into the air. If it went into the air separate and went boom, it was illegal. That's how, that was the layman's way of defining what was illegal versus legal. Now, it can go into the air and go boom. They doubled the powder uh, capacity. You can use mortars, bottle rockets, as I said, cherry bombs, firecrackers. That's now nothing, illegal. Nothing over 150 milligrams. Correct. But it more, I think it more than doubled from what the old one was. <laughs> And I can tell you what the places sell in town at the site. That's all. That's Wednesday all legit. Night, Wednesday night and Saturday night, uh, believe me, these things were more than 50 milligrams. And there are restrictions according to the law. Yes. You can't be ignited or discharged on public or private property without express permission of the property owner. These people were, uh, they were setting them off on the church property without permission. Okay. Um, they cannot discharge, uh, not discharge within 150 feet of an occupied structure. All the neighbors on Hall Street were out because they were afraid their house was going to catch on fire. That's how big these, this this display was. I know. Both nights. The mortars are pretty potent. They're allowed to use. I, I think. I think we need to look into that. Right. I think we need to get an ordinance. Ten o'clock. My yeah, dog. We, we my dog is still shaking. It. We can put it. We can put a time frame on it. I hope you consider it. And I'm sorry, individual. This is, this is trivial compared to what you people have gone through. What? Yeah. What? I, hate I hope I win the lottery. Uh, one, last, one last comment. Sorry, you had something you want to say real quick. Yeah, I'll tell you exactly what the problem is. Uh, your info structure, your source of storm water, and your sewage is. This problem is not going to go away until you correct it as far as Upper St. Clair puts money in the reserve storm and sanitary lines. South Bay Ed has a uh, sort of board that does all their improvements for the new outside contracting. Semi drops and pipe cleaning. It's not going to correct your info structure. You can snake a pipe to your blue in the face. If the pipe is broken, your storm water is going into your sanitary line, and they're both broke. That's where your sewage comes from in your house. It overflows into the sanitary, it overflows and comes up to your line and into your face. It's going to continue to happen. I'm a new resident. I, bet, I bought my house in August. I haven't even been here a year. I've been flooded three times with raw sewage. And I live on New York Street. And my heart goes out to the people that are a lot worse than me. But I live on New York Street. What address, sir? 
323. And I also am pretty familiar with storm sores and sanitary lines. I work with a neighboring borough. And you guys have a lot of problems. And it's it's not going to, it's not going to go away until you start digging up and replacing lines, whether it's storm sewer lines or sanitation. I've been here I've been here bought my house in August. By that January, I had five inches of raw sewage in my house. I got no I have no water coming in through the foundation. It's coming up. It's your your main line is the problem. It's backing up. It's come I'm the first one on the street to get it. And then my neighbors up the street to get it. Every time it rains, this is the third time I've got the flooded. It's cost me five thousand dollars the first time. My contractor's not even done with my basement. I got flooded the, the same lake that these people flooded on Baldwin Street and, and I got I don't even have my basement painted. And my brand new drywall is John. So until you, until you can talk to your blue in the face spot that you don't have for this or that. Bottom line is, all these other boroughs are putting money, the time to fix their infrastructure. You can talk about bridges, that's all important. But the bottom line is, until you fix from your stormwater going into your sanitation line, or vice versa, you're still going to get sewage in your house no matter what. Now I personally am going to put a backflow belt in my house. It's going to cost me money and I want to know if you guys will pay for it. Actually, if you contact Lori, she already has your address on where you're located. We have exactly what the backflow program is going on right now. Because all the water that comes on the basement, which is from St. Clair, which they're doing all kinds of improvements throughout there. Because I worked there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bridgeville is in the head. Yeah. All, everything else, everybody else, but Bridgeville is the one holding the back. Yeah, we actually started a, a black backflow <coughs> program this year. It took us, there were some, um, the attorney had to do um, some legal work and that type of thing to. Um, to get it going, and it just happened that he got everything ready the week of the flood. I apologize, I sent it out when I got it. But we can put you on the list, and what, what we're doing is we're putting the preventers in. Um, we also have a million dollar a year sanitary sewer budget where we're mandated by the consent order, just like all the other communities. Um, we, we, uh, we do structural repairs, we do lining, we do manhole inspections and, and water improvements. It's, it's an ongoing process. And, and it's, it's a million dollar, dollar budget every oh, year. Oh, I understand. So, it's very expensive. Yeah, but I, I'm saying we're, we're doing it. So We've been doing the same thing as the other 83 communities have. Uh, right. Past year, just right. 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 And she can document that we have. I appreciate it, folks. And we don't want to leave you astray. I, I, one thing that needs to be said, please, if I might. Is there things we can do to mitigate that? We've been working on that plan exactly like that on Baldwin Street for a couple of years yet. So are they talking about, or are we looking into the hazard mitigation that allows us with other people's monies? We don't have the funds to do the buyouts of, uh, under the hazard mitigation plan yet. Lining the sewers, the storm sewers. When you have an event like happened in Ivan on May 16th and on June 20th, there is no storm sewer system that can handle that. And we're not being truthful if we don't look you in the eyes and tell you that. When you get three inches of water in that time frame, and Joe, you can help me, it's ball game over. There's, there, the, the, you cannot stop that sort of, please, I plan on that. I had another engineer call and his was on a golf course right two miles from here. There wasn't a structure within a mile. That was a, it turned into a river six inches deep and 100 yards wide. <coughs> we have micro hurricanes right now. They park themselves. A week after your event, I was in my home in Renderdale. I didn't have a drop. McDonald and parts of Mount Pleasant, where there is not heavy development, completely wiped out. I'm getting right. water with less than a moderate rain. That's different causation, and we will help you with that. That's, That's not what happened on June. Going into your All I want to do is flood my house. Yeah. And, when, and, we, and the borough will work there. There. There's, There's a problem, problem with your line. Okay, the borough will work on backwards. Folks, please appreciate. 
sanitary sewer line deficiencies or small cell deficiencies have nothing to do with what happens when you get branches of water over your burrow. Excuse me, Three days ago, I spent four hours driving through Upper City Park. They have water retention areas that are two and three large. But uh, in, uh, in Bethel Park, they, they got, uh, several years ago, they got $4 million to build a concrete tunnel uh, 12 feet by, I think, 5 feet high, uh, almost a half a mile down Logan. You probably know that down Logan Drive. To protect 20 homes, you're talking about 200 homes, 200 people here. We are entitled to big money mm -hmm. for lots of different reasons. We better put the arguments together and present them to the right people. But showing them that you can get returned from the development of property like DNC Supply in the Baldwin Street area, that's with that promise, we did it. In my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate what? everything you guys have gone through. Can I just ask one question? Yes. After Julie Duran, uh, also TNC supply original was like, after listening to all of our stories, the one thing that really sticks in my mind is we're working on it, we're working on it, we're working on it. Do we have a time frame? Do we have a month? Do we have a year? If we get flooded again, my 84 five year old father in law is not going to make it. Neither is my husband, neither is my son. We need a timeline. We need one month, two months, a year, something. We cannot live like this. We are living under very, very stressful situations right now. And I need a family back. And these people need their homes back. We need time frames. That's all I'm asking. Give us time frames and give us action. We cannot live like this one more yeah, time. Can't do it. Can we have a response on that? <coughs> We're work <laughs> no, we're working on it. No, we, we've been working on a pro a pro plan for Baldwin Street for the last two years. It, does, it isn't something you can fix with thousands of dollars. It's something you have to fix with millions of dollars. Thirty million dollars. Just case one and case three for uh, fifteen years. It's thirty million dollars. We discussed. I'm in planning commission as well. We'll be we'll be good if you people show up on a planning commission to hear that what we're yes, trying yeah. to do with all this. Like the chairman invited you to be there. Exactly. I'm sorry. I said I just want to ask because I seem to be like the other issue. I moved here last February and I just started my daughter in sixth grade. Her Valley, and I'm down at six point seven. And my landlord told me it's going to be five, six, six, seven months before my apartment is, you know, back up and running. So I'm temporarily bouncing around to like family houses and have somewhere to stay. What am I supposed to do for this following school year for my daughter? <laughs> Man, I suggest you talk to churches rally, but probably in my opinion, you just, that's still your place and you still live here. And if they have any difficulty with them communicating, please communicate back. I didn't know they had some kind of like, you know, forgiveness thing because obviously, this is a devastation or something. The fact that you're somewhere else in my mind doesn't mean you're not living here and you live even though you've been physically put out of your home. Yeah. Please do because we will help you communicate with churches rally. You know, Tom, I've seen that in fire fires. Uh, so where families out and they live in another community, but they still go to the same school. So definitely contact the school district. Yeah, same kind of same scenario. Wait, this placement doesn't look okay. Excuse me, Tom. Moving forward, what are your plans? <laughs> Well, we have a meeting. We have a meeting with the county this week, next week. I mean, yes, to talk about the bridge, which is a, which is a uh, which is obviously part of the problem. Uh, we're going to be working. We have a meeting uh, set with the other communities along the, the floodplain. To see, to, they would like to work on a expansive plan on how we work with the communities together, and instead of us being alone and them being alone, how we work together as a community is a regional problem. Will you publish those minutes then? Hmm? Will you publish those minutes for meetings? I doubt, I do not know. I don't know if it will be a public meeting, I doubt. Who's spearheading this? 
who would be our, our point of contact to get information about? Lori, well, Lori kind of got her hands in the building. About everybody in the Lori's the CEO of Federal. Yeah, I understand. You know what? And that's what is what's amazing that all of this falls on Lori. She does a great job in this conference. She's helping people get with FEMA. She's helping the SBA. She's working on the, the, the mitigation issue on the Rockland Run Creek. She's she's doing it all. I mean, and now you know exactly how challenging and professional the position of a municipal manager is. Now she's the CEO. That's what she does. If I need to find out what the outcome of that meeting with the county is, who do I talk to? Yeah, can't do it. That's just not fair. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, 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 that's Fair Tell me, Mike. Question. Yes. Is this sewer back on the Uh-huh. I'm on the block room and we've never got all the letters from me about anything. What we did was we started it's a it's a pilot program. So what we did was we started down wall one. And we're going to do it in phases. We'll be coming up with Lachlan. We'll be going down Maple. Um, we'll also be going down Brookfield, um, the homes that that received backup, like a gentleman yep. at 323. I had no idea that he was having backup. So um, it, just give me a call and give me your address. Um, we've we've uh, let the contract. Sure. Because my next question is going to be about the fund for the flood victims. Yes. How is that going to work? We're actually, um, everybody's been so, so gracious, and the fund is, is uh, building. So I think after um, all the fundraisers are in, then there'll be a determination made as to how to distribute the money fairly and in a timely manner. Um, I know there's a comedy, a, a comedy show fundraiser that the uh, fire department is holding on July 28th. And there's another one. There's one more. Something with the chambers, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the chamber did a GoFundMe. So there's a couple more that are coming in. And as soon as we see that everything's in, we we want to do it fairly, as far as. Yeah. Do we get in touch with you? We'll, we'll send. What, what, what do you think the best way to do it is? We've, we've talked about what the fair way to do it is. And I think there's gonna be a committee. I think the like original league's gonna have a separate committee. Um, and it's not gonna be a it isn't, it isn't our decision at council level. We'll have representatives from the community, the community I think they'll work on the best way to it, it, whether it's all right it's a hundred people or two hundred people affected and we divide it up or or as it as need. I don't know. Other than come up with that. Laura, can I ask another question? Sure. Since you seem to be the end of the line for a lot of these questions, maybe there should be a resolution to give her some help at least for six months so she has somebody who she can task to do some of this. Because, look, we put a little business back on the face of the earth within a week. Um, I can tell you, I sure as heck didn't do it alone. It took a lot of people, and that's just one small. And you're talking about a multifaceted business that you're trying to do. But people need to know who to contact. Like, I'd like to know who we can contact in this conservancy group, district, whoever they are, who pulled the plug on doing something in the short term to provide time, if nothing else, it provides time to allow Bill to come down the street and say, get out, the water's coming. Because that's unfair. Are they going to come down and clean up Baldwin Street? Lori's everybody's, everybody's point of contact. But all I'm saying, saying, flows to let us all put our energies yeah. towards pointing at the right people. Yeah, Whoever yeah. stopped that, that, that's criminal. <laughs> that they would stop an attempt. It, even if it's a band aid. Mm -hmm. We'll take band aids right now. We'll wait for the surge in the sutures. Yeah. you got to go up to Upper St. Clair. 
Right. Somebody's got to write some hell. Get them on the TV. It's time. It's yeah. not just You're right. Community. Upper St. Clair doesn't do squat when it comes to what flows down from their end. Well, and that, there, that there is debris in there. So coming down, there's tennis ball. Somebody's going to go up and rattle their chains, too. Go to their next council meeting. Yeah. 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 They, they don't care. They don't care. They don't. You're right. You're right. Marco. They don't rattle their chains. You're not going to be allowed to stand at that podium unless you're taxpayer. But... What we can do is get these other organizations that police the creek, so that the county go over their heads. We need to know who to target our voices. It's far away time for the older communities to stop paying for the prosperity upstream. You're right. We actually have been in contact with representatives from the county. Um, We've been in contact with the conservation district. Um, we are contacting the DEP, and we want them to come down and look at what we have and tell us what we can do. They can come down and face everyone in this room. You know, what can we, what are you going to let us put in this street? Because we were ready to do it. We were under the declaration. We had two posts in. And if you don't follow the criteria of the Allegheny County Conservation District, you can be fined up to $25,000 a day. And so, if you do follow them, I can lose our business for the fourth time in one year. Yeah. They might go down to 30 years ago. Yeah. So I had to make the hard decision to pull it out. Which was horrible for me because I felt like we were doing something. We talked about it. No one talked about it. I wanted it was you because it was something. It was something. She, right now, she calls something goes a long way. Right. Can you put concrete coffins in there? They're temporary. Can you put concrete coffins and that's blocks what, in there? It's, in, and that's in, what we tell need. Them, tell them, they, they come down and fix it. Down. Yeah. We we want them to come to the table with us. <laughs> For, uh, you know, for, we're, we're always told no. You know, we, we can't dredge. Um, you're only allowed to take sediment uh, out of the stream 50 feet up from a bridge. You can't go any further than that. Um, those types of things, they, uh, yeah, it, you know, you can't take machinery in the stream. I mean, there, there's so many criteria that people just have no idea that we, have, we, would we love to just get in there and dig that thing out and make it wider? Well, water Absolutely. Lines stop you from doing that because yeah. I know for a fact where the water line is. I was standing on it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we we would absolutely love to yeah. do a lot of things. Trust me. We, we I would put my machine it. in there. They can sue me all over. I know. I, I I understand. But I can give you the numbers of the people that we put it on the website so yeah. everyone can call them. I Maybe will. they'll get sick and tired of answering their phone, like we're sick and tired of getting flooded. I will. Good idea. Yeah. I'll put it on there. You shouldn't take the burden on all this. Let people stop firing at each other and start firing at the people that can do something. We have a phone number of a couple people and they've been very receptive. Mm -hmm. I've been impressed with them so far. Well, that's good. And Bill knows I've been impressed with them because he said he tried to contact someone and within 15 minutes, Jenny had them on the phone. Yeah. So we have their attention. Mm -hmm. To let this fire go down yeah. is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's just inconscionable. But when we, after the 2004 flood, um, Honorado was uh, the county executive then, and they came and they did a tour, and they talked about putting a bull nose on that um, on that pier so that the debris would slide off more. Yeah. Yeah. Away. Well, I see why that won't work. Come over. I'll show you a little bit. Yeah. And, and they. They never came to do it, and we never really pushed it because I never really felt that that was going to solve the problem. No, they're, instead they're going to improve, they're going to fix and patch I and charge the stupid thing. Yeah. You probably spend half a million dollars, take the half a million dollars, put it in your pocket, and put it towards the whatever number it is to replace that. And that's, we told yeah. them, and, and, and my buddy, my friend John was standing right beside me, who by the way is an engineer. Mm -hmm. He doesn't let a lot of people know that. That's not a problem. It's a watershed problem. Mm -hmm. You got to get them all taken care of with something like this. And you can't raise manholes in the middle of doggone 
bridge is supposed to be passing water through it. It doesn't take an engineer. I mean, my 12-year-old daughter could come in here and tell you that that's stupid. <laughs> Here's another thing that you're saying about them watersheds. You know, these all these new developers are out there and they have to put these watersheds in. There is nothing in Pennsylvania that says that they have to be maintained. There's nobody to go inspect them and follow up on them. And all these new developers have been put in for over 20 some years. They put them in, so nobody maintains them, and there's nobody to go out there to inspect them. So they're full and plugged. Where do you think that water's going? Well, you've taken everybody's rainwater off of the roofs and everything else, and you've taken out of the sanitary system, which requires you now to clean the sanitary yeah. system because it doesn't flow in low times. Right. And it puts it all in the creek, too. Right. Yep. So just with that one move, they probably quadrupled the amount of water in the watershed. Yep. You want to develop something, you have to have a retention pond, but you don't have to maintain it or have to inspect it after they're done. So let us go to the other people. Take some of the heat off of you That's and fine. let people go to the source. <laughs> so fine. we have season, but you would hope well-connected political people on council of right here long enough that you should know the right people to talk to in the county, the right representatives in the state to put fires. <laughs> Just give you a little advice. There's a county council meeting tomorrow at Fire Shock. It's in the cold. Where? Exactly. It's in the cold. It's in the cold. It's But that's where John's idea of having a contingent who can show up as a collective voice representing the borough of Bridgeville makes sense. People who are committed to following this through. I mean, I'm sure that people would step up and volunteer. I mean, we'll do whatever we can as long as it's not you know. It's got to be appointed. Thank you. All right. Um, on to the regular meeting. Yes. Hey, Somebody, if I could stop out, I'd like to see that video of where, where that piled up. Because what, one of my suggestions tonight is going to be is that we, and I've talked to our solicitor about it, is tethering all these dumpsters. Because a lot of what happened there was from the dumpsters. And uh, actually, the dumpsters were doing you a favor okay. until the water breached. From the alleyway. Yeah. Well, that's why I'd like to see well, the video. It actually created a waterfall. It created just what you were trying to make, create. If you watch the video, there's the dumpsters found themselves in a way that there was a spillway. Okay. And it wasn't until the water came down Baldwin and breached the creek the wrong way that it plumbed up completely. Okay. Well, that's and what I'd like to see. So it proves your theory that if you can stop this, not stop it, if you can collect it at points along the creek, look, Mother Nature holds trump card. If yep. she decides to play it, you're done. But that did show that as long as that water was rolling over those dumpsters, it was fine. Okay. It wasn't until stuff went in behind them and plugged completely that it would literally look like if you have a glass of water under a faucet. Can you borrow me a disc of that? I can ask you too, because I'm not that technical. Okay. <laughs> well, that's, well, I'm just saying, because with our, our security cameras, we've burned discs for the police in that in the past. Uh, we, yeah, yeah. And, and we, we were fine up until the power went out. Okay. Our battery backup when it died, and we lost them for a while. That's why I stayed there. But if you could give me a disc of that, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, it's, um, it's harrowing. Yeah, Sir, I can assure you the very reason they instigated the meeting from the county state feds next week up was exactly for the reasons that you said. Well, I just, you know, there's a lot of emotions. And, um, look, technically it's Jenny's story. I'm just the guy who couldn't physically get there to help her, and that was the same thing. Does someone else have to die? Before <coughs> it because it's only by grace of God that didn't happen this time. I mean, honestly, it could have been her because I saw her do something that I asked her please to never do again, which was to try to rescue something out of the water. Yeah. And Phil even knows it's a good thing I couldn't make it down here because I probably would have been dumb enough to do the same thing. 
What you have to understand is the bullet that we dodged too. Because Pardon? the bullet that we dodged by this happening at the time of night that it did, because in that plane down there, we also have a daycare center during the day. Oh, okay. yeah, and yeah. an animal daycare center. Imagine if this happened at noon. Yeah, it was roughly 40 ounces. Yeah. I mean, and it was way faster than it happened. And it was five weeks before that it happened. And all of us was debris five weeks before. Mm -hmm. It created a beaver dam, and water was still going through. But it never completely got stocked up. Yeah. And, and frankly, look, her, her back parking lot becomes the retention pond. Yeah. So, fair or unfair, that's just what happened. It was five weeks before she lost a lot. Um, and that's what made this one a lot more hard to digest because, and just like everyone else at the club and neighbors down there, I told Mr. Sheriff, I said, you see all those dumpsters and all that stuff sitting on the curb? None of it's more than five weeks old. You can't be because everyone had in place. But yeah, I mean, we're always there to help you guys. Okay, thank nice. you. Deadlines extended to June 16th. That's working on it. She's been better Virginia first. 
family business with the people next door, it will be done on top of stuff. That's all I have. Uh, uh, Nina, public. Uh, nothing much. It, uh, we, we have a list uh, this month, of course, it is the uh, community day, which uh, public work in Lowry and Hanzo, they all work uh, for that. Uh, surely everybody is teaching. And as far as uh, public work and everybody else for the fun, I mean, I call everybody public work because we all were working, every single one. I don't know where they get these people, they don't see this and they don't see that. But this is all I want. Uh, a, a good job is done by everybody. The police department, fire department, council people, employees, everybody pitching hard. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, public safety, Bill. Yeah, Mike, I'm not going to pile on. Okay. Just a big thing. Yeah. Both the police department and the fire department for the response that night yes. and, and the following two weeks ago. Tremendous. So thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm thankful for everyone who has been busy with the flood. Um, the first person who called me was Connor Lamb and then also C. Means from Allegheny County. And Carolyn Coy K from Bethany Presbyterian Church was one of the first ones to call and say she was organizing a group of people to go out and help people clean their homes on all the streets that were affected. So I'm thankful for all that. PJ, who served over 500 people with free meals, and she's still offering free meals now on all Wednesdays and Thursdays. So God bless us all and help us to, to really love each other and get this community back to where it needs to be. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Very nice. Police Chief. Thanks, Council President. Um, it said no sense in giving a detailed report. We've been providing a written report with staff from last month, but um, you know, it would be nice, I think, if some folks would have stuck around so we could talk about how you know, people came together and well the churches are doing what we're doing and where people can go to get items that they may need. Um, Methodist Church still has cleaning supplies. Holy Child Church is handling the furniture storage. Their gym is filled with capacity to the point where we're working on trying to get them extra storage units outside the church to put just appliances in that people want to donate. So they're having to turn people away. They're getting so much equipment. Also, a second storage unit would be helpful for people that want to go down and kind of claim or tag property as theirs that aren't ready to put it in their apartment or house as yet. They can then claim it, move it to the outside storage unit, where it can be held until their, their place is ready. The Vineyard Church has a ton of clothes up there, and I know Christian Ministries was even in the area, helping people with cleanup and recovery. You know, word was getting out, not only through social media, not only through the borough website, but there were people from each individual church groups going around to people on Maple, McLaughlin, and Baldwin Street and spreading the word. So, I don't know how some people aren't getting the message, but there has been a great effort made to spread that message. I agree, Charlie. Thanks. Tom? Uh, yeah, my Ricky Solicitor's report. I, and I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to call on either. I'm not a politician, but I'd be remiss if I didn't say one thing. And that's that this. That leader is somebody that somebody wants to follow, the folks want to follow, the people will bleed for it. And with all respect to everybody, Chile ate three plus days without sleep and all your meetings and eating W and all that. But I'm sorry. If there's one person, there's a difference between why that street doesn't look like it looked Thursday morning and how it looks today, their name's Gloria Collins. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> This is like the trio. I mean, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people down there. I know you have to follow her, but the rest yeah. of us, because she's here. Joe, I uh, have my written report. Uh, again, I, you know, I'm here to help any way I can. I had talked with uh, Fred Bingham of the Flood Control Authority last week, and we talked about if there's something that could be done along the block and run, maybe we explore the possibility of the Flood Control Authority taking over the operation and maintenance of that. And it's a multi municipal project, especially since Bridgewell and Upper St. Clair are members of the Flood Control Authority. So it's something to think about and is, a, is one of our resources. So we can, we're, we're helping out. Bill? 
Thank you, Brother President. Again, from the fire department to everybody, thank you for thanking us and everything else. You know, we appreciate it. Um, just a couple things on that night and week and days and everything else after. The night of the incident, we did 50 some plus water rescues with boats from all these departments that came in. Uh, we had over 30 just on Baldwin Street. I want to say it was a little over 10 on Carroll and Brookfield. And I never got the true numbers, but it was on the block and the Maple. So I was kind of rounding that up to about 50 plus is what we did with the boats. It was uh, a little tough getting boats at first. North Um my hat's off to them because they were on their fourth rescue when all the other boats finally started coming in, just to let everybody know. Because these boats were trying to come to us, but as they were coming to us, they were running into already floodings in other areas from on Campbell's Run Road and Fastball and South Park and throughout the county. You know, it wasn't just Bridgeville that got hit. You know, there was multiple areas. There was actually three counties involved that night. So it took a little while for some of the boats to get here. Now. I mean, some of the ones that we had were as far as from Frederickstown out there in Washington County, it was the Green County line. Uh, we did have one come, I think was from Green County. You're talking Beaver Falls and New Brighton, they were... Chief, how did they find out to come here? Just out of curiosity. They, when this goes on, like early in the night, as probably most people, if they have their phones set up, a warning went out about flood warning for the area. And you heard it on the radio, then you heard it on the TV, things like that. Well, the Allegheny County does, they put their self into a storm mode and they're watching it. And they actually, at one point in time, before all this happened, they put all these swift water teams on standby in their stations for deployment. But they don't deploy them until they get areas that are hit. Well, it all hit at the same time. So it was very thin. Did they deploy these guys from the different areas? <clears throat> they, they know an idea where they're going? Like? Yeah. I mean, we had from Etna and Blonox, or yeah, Blonox come in too. So how you kind of was saying, hey, you go here, yeah. you go there. I personally called North Bay right away because one, they have a paid staff and uh, I know the chief for a while, we worked out an agreement with that. And his guys were actually en route to do one in Peters and Peters ended up getting the person out. So they were already on the road. So that's how they got here even quicker. So they were set up and ready to go. They were on 19 actually in Peter, so they made it here pretty quick and they were in the water and going pretty fast. And after their fourth rescue, they had a motor problem. They fixed that up real quick and they were right back into it. Um, so, but the one thing we did as the Char West Cog Chiefs Association, we had our meeting last week. We are actually looking into putting in our own swift water team too because the demand out there is just becoming more and more in general. Yeah. If everybody pays attention, flooding is happening more and more. And it's even happening in areas that are not getting it, and now they're getting it. So it, it's becoming a problem. So we as our Chiefs Association, we are actually looking into it and talking with uh, Ortete's office. The state has some money available, so we're going to try to obtain so we can put under the Char West Cog Chiefs our own teams together too, so one assists us and other people in our club or elsewhere. So we're going to be working on training people and that. It's going to take some time. It'll probably take a better part of a year before we're probably really up and fully functioned and ready to go for it from getting the equipment and the training. Because one of the trainings that the people have to go through, we have, they have to go to Harrisburg for I forget how many days because they have to do the training in the Susquehanna River out there. They have a place set up to where it's actually always swift water and that. So they literally got to do it in the swift water when they do this. But um, some of the other things about that night <coughs> and we kind of touched on a little bit was the animals in the canine club. You know, we did have over 12 dogs rescued and that people in there had them up on the second floor. We did lose a few. So it felt bad. But one thing I do want to emphasize to everybody, and I got into a couple arguments with some people when this water's going up. Your vehicles, your property, you're a more priority to me than those things are. 
you know, I know you've got a lot of money invested in that stock and everything else, but you know, reality is we can go get another one, but we can't go get another life. And there was two different instances where I literally got into a pushing match with two people that were three times the size of me and I wouldn't back down to them because it was in my heart, you know, it's on my mind. Because if they go in and go, it's my butt. It's my butt that's going to answer, why did you let them go in? And some of these people saying that, we well, got to let us go get that stuff. It's my butt being the one in charge here. That i got to answer to those family's attorneys, the girl in the truck that she wanted to drive up. Well, why didn't you stop her? It'd be suing us. It's a vehicle. It can be replaced. I, I, you know, I hate to be that way and sound that way, but a life, a human life comes first, animal's life comes second, property's last. And that's something that needs to be emphasized out there. And you hear this all the time out there, even the news media is doing it. Don't drive in flooded roads. Three inches of water will knock you right off your feet. You can't even do nothing. And you're gone. So that's something we all need to look at. You know, the best thing to tell people what they did that night was to stay in their places and get the highest spots. And we got them. I do know the boat rescue people did tell me there was one family that they got out that their house is a single story house, but the water was at their neck. When they got to them, it was at their neck. But got them out. You know, but. The coordination, everything that went down that night with the number of departments and everything else went really well. I was happy with a lot of that. Um, I had used a lot of my other departments, fire departments that came in. I put them in charge of different things, different areas. <coughs> you know, I had multiple areas going all at the same time, but I kept track of everything. If, if you would happen to be with me at the where I was at watching, I always check on over here, Terrell and Brookfield. I was checking on the McLaughlin Maple people all the time. I had my Baldwin and railroad area. I was always rotating around. It's a, it's a lot. I call it organized chaos, but it, it went very smooth. And everybody that came, their help, their participation. And one last thing is, I made the decision the next morning when daylight came to suspend everything we were doing to put people in to uh, start looking for the missing lady. I wanted to confirm that she wasn't in our town. We kind of had the inkling, but I wanted to make sure if she wasn't that we could say, no, we already checked our area, but we did find her. And at least we gave the family some closure. They did come down and thank us and everything else and appreciate that we stopped everything for her to give them closure. Um, but everybody that came, they assisted us. It was just great. I mean, I even gave my guys that Saturday after it over, I told them we're done. We had a picnic on the station. I invited a lot of the fire departments that came to sit come down with cooking some food, got some drinks, things like that, we're gonna relax. And in the middle of it, Tom happened to be down there. We got hit for three calls right away. And I'm like, that's it, we're trying to relax. I end up calling Stowe Township up, and I says, we're done. We're not answering no more calls. We relax, we don't have to worry about that pager goes off. Stowe Township's gonna go answer the calls if we bought any that night. So my people and everybody else can literally sit down and relax and not have that worry. This, the number of, since this incident, the number of calls we've been having lately, it's just been unreal. Um, I do know I have to finish my reports, and my last time I had them over 200 reports, I gotta get done. I got about 50 done right now. So, a lot of work. A lot of work on my end also, you know, so. But again, thanks for the support and the outpour from everybody, you know, thanking us. That's what we're here for, that's what we train to do. You know, that's what we do for the time, for anybody. But we appreciate it. We do not get enough. Neither does the chief, neither does the EMS, and neither does you guys. What you guys do behind the scenes. Just to touch on something there, the command that went on that night, the fire departments and that response was amazing in my eyes. I mean, that was a, that was a show of manpower and support that showed up from Frederick Town. 
lady who worked in our magistrate's office was from Fredericktown, and her husband was one of the Swiftwater voters who came down. Um, I didn't get into this earlier in my report, but kind of give the rest of the story from the police side where we were at when this all went down. Personally, me and my girlfriend and two oldest kids were having dinner at South Hills Village, watching the rain come down. After about an hour of it, right before the alerts went off, I said, it's going to be a long night. The town's going to flood. There's no doubt in my mind, not knowing it was going to be as bad as it was. But he knew it was coming. There was no avoiding that amount of rain. So I'm trying to call the guys that were on duty. And unfortunately, they had to respond to a domestic call. I believe it was on Bank Street. Shortly after the domestic ended, the, I believe it was the female grabbed her chest and passed away. So now we have an investigation on our hands because we had a death following a domestic dispute. And that had the guys tied up for that. We had county police come out and get involved. So that was as the rain was pouring down, they were tied down with that. And something else happened. It was just a total mess. Anything that could go wrong went wrong. Everybody was busy. So we came back here. Hooked up with Chilio down here. I went into service with my cargo shorts and t-shirt, put on my rain jacket, and that, that was the beginning of it. Called out the other ships early. And uh, you know, it's the third time I've watched boats get launched from railroad streets since 2004. What can you say? I and mean, this was the worst by far. I also and, want to thank my daughter. Yes. Waking her up at one o'clock in the morning to come down to help us with the animals, being she works at the veterinary hospital. To make sure they got the water and everything else. You know, she's awesome with that. But it was perfect. Went quick. Like I said, everything went very well. I was very happy how it didn't went. Sorry. That's all right. It's just the timing of everything. Like I said, I look at it and, you know, I say there's a daycare center there and there's also a dog and daycare center. If this happened during the day, this would have been 10 times worse. We're lucky it happened when it did. For sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Oh, got tickets. I got tickets. There <laughs> <laughs> you go. How many tickets? Before they all bailed out. I know. Harry, you may need this for the society. I gave you people all the stuff. I still have to get that table done. And I'm selling raffle tickets. Of course you are. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 This time it's the Pirates, August the 5th, Sunday afternoon. Four mm -hmm. seats in the past. The Falls Park. Hockey? Mm -hmm. Falls Hockey thing. They can talk the other way around. Like, like this is the, from the company I work for. They give it to us. Great, thank you very much. So I'll be drawn up for that in the next week or so. Tonight I'll start it. So, very right. soon. Uh, and away from the library, Carmen, Lori, Lori, I think you, <laughs> old business, new business. I'd, I'd just like to ask between public safety and our solicitor to start some kind of um, legislation for the dumpsters, because to me, I think that was one of the key issues. And that all the dumpsters in the mm -hmm. valley need to be tethered. Some way to work. Yeah, no, I'll be honest with you. This, I believe we already have. And I'll double check because we did our fee board list that we did talk to that. I that may already be part of it. But it's not the work. Yeah, we, I'm just going down there and seeing all them dumpsters. That's really disturbed me the most. You know. but what, between that and the car that got in there, uh, I watched them pull that pile apart down there. And that, uh, we need to control that. Is that a trailblazer? Huh? The trailblazer? Yeah. I have pictures of all these objects. We, we, get, we can at least get that under control and work towards that. Logs and everything else are others. So. We, we actually pulled out, just I forgot about that, you say cars. We actually pulled out 12 cars and 30 plus dumpsters. Uh, Felina moved out of the crib. That's what I'm saying. All right, um, we're going to adjourn. And then we're going to executive session. I make a motion to adjourn. I just want to say one thing. Without Bill, I would have never survived. And I want to thank you for everything because. The team. And so the team was awesome. Bill yeah. was the leader. Yeah. You know, it was just overwhelming. It's still overwhelming and it's upsetting. 
Yeah, I haven't slept much. Yeah, I, I went 38 hours without sleep from the first time I started. So my, my, my husband asked me why why I was staring at the blank wall, and I, I said, <laughs> just please don't talk. Just, just please don't talk. Yeah. So. Can I ask one more thing before you? You adjourn? Yep. That since I didn't get, you know, I wanted to say sure. quick, but. Um, other little things that you might do to help the residents, you know, well, I'm going to talk about maybe calling John Weinstein up and, and see if we, you know, adjust the, yeah. you know, is there any chance calling Alcatan and uh, the water company to see if they can give us a break? Because, you know, I mean, like my hose never stopped running, you know, for three or four days and stuff. And now I'm, I'm starting to walk around a little bit from here and the story is that A lot, of, some people that have flood insurance aren't getting stuff that they were kind of promised. And I was just wondering if our solicitor could step in and help if, if there's a legal battle between why, why this isn't insured and stuff. I can help with your permission here, folks. Guys, technically, I'm the borough solicitor. And yeah, you know, I know the the individual folks. The residents are the borough. You know, certainly, like everybody else, can take a look at an individual situation and help put them in somebody's hands if we are not allowed to help them directly. But, you know, like, be able to help them out a little bit. What we should do, we should all, all together, the, this area, or not the area, the flat. We should all together ask uh, for flood issue together and charge according to 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 what you what you have and so forth. You know, how much you want. But if we all get that flood insurance, probably we have a better rate. It's it's a female. Yeah. It's only it's so, so many, yeah, thank you. It is. It's that's right. I know, I'd be happy. I would be. I'd be happy if I'm. Even if I can't, technically, be happy to help anybody. Obviously, put them in the right. Position. You're in the, lead them in the right direction. Thank you. Yes.